read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When you listen, it's amazing what you can learn. When you act on what you've learned, it's amazing what you can change. Thank you very much. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Donahue? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Phillips? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Here. Alderperson Wolf? Present. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you very much. Next, I ask you to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our fifth council meeting on June 1st. Entertain motion, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item 4.1 is a presentation, which is an update on TIF districts by Chad Pelichek, the Director of Planning and Development, and Marty Halverson from the Finance Department. Gentlemen. Thank you, Mayor. So I'm going to start out, and this will be a tag team if you've got any uh, financial questions as we review the current status of our TIF districts. So just a little bit of background. Um, what is a TIF district? A TIF district is a mechanism for funding development and infrastructure related to development. It allows all taxing jur jurisdictions benefiting from the development to share in its cost. Um, we interchangeably use the word TIF to TID. So a TIF is a financing option that allows a municipality, a town, village, or city to fund infrastructure and other improvements through property tax revenue on newly developed property. And the TID is the actual district uh, that identifies the area where um, the TIF incentive or TIF uh, development is to be. So it's the municipality identifies an area known as the district as, a, uh, as appropriate for the certain type of development. A little bit about the TIF law background. So Wisconsin adopted TIF legislation in 1975 to eliminate blighted areas in urban neighborhoods. Before the TIF law was enacted, if a municipality wanted to expand its local tax base, the municipality alone would have to pay the cost, but the overlapping, overlying taxing jurisdictions, as in the other like school district and county, would also benefit from the growth. The legislation saw this situation as un. Legislators saw this uh, situation as unfair and viewed TIF as a way to remedy the problem and encourage cooperation between local governments. And in our case, it makes up uh, Sheboygan County, Sheboygan Area School District, and the Lakeshore Technical College. So what kind of tip, types of tips, TIDs are there? So you can either have a blight elimination uh, TIF or TID, which requires a hearing to uh, blight properties. Uh, a rehabilitation district. This is a district very similar to blight, but it doesn't, you're not blighting people's properties. Um, this can be open for up to 27 years. An industrial TIF funds industrial and business parks and can be open for 20 years. A mixed use TIF is used when there is a mixed development. So if you have residential and commercial together, um, it would be a mixed use TIF and they're open for 20 years. And then you can use it for environmental cleanup uh, for areas, if you had a factory that had significant environmental uh, degradation, you can use it for environmental costs related to the cleanup, and those districts can be open for 20 years as well. <clears throat> so how does TIF work? Upon creation, the value of the TID is frozen for property tax distribution purposes. So in, this, in the city, um, the county school district and Technical College continue to receive tax revenue off the base. So whatever the value was at the time that the district was certified uh, to be created, the, the taxing jurisdictions continue to receive that 
uh, revenue, and then any new revenue um, that's generated as it relates to the development is then kept by the municipality and must be spent on projects specific to the district in accordance with the project plan. Once the TIF closes, all taxing entities start to realize the benefits of the new value. So this graph just shows you what that means. So um, when you, you can see the line on the bottom, TID created and TID terminated, and how the kind of segregation happens um, under each one of those taxing uh, jurisdictions. How are TIF projects funded? Since incremental values are delayed, municipalities must decide on how to fund the improvements that lead to the creation of the increments. So you can do one of three things. You can bond for upfront funding for projects using municipal bonds. Um, you can do what's called city-led pay-as-you-go, harnessing new development and using that income to pay for future projects. And then you can do developer-led pay-as-you-go, asking the developer to finance their own improvements and agreeing to pay them back uh, all or on a percentage of the tax increment received over a certain amount of time. So most of the time what you're seeing um, when we have development agreements with developers is the developer-led pay-as-you-go where the developer funds the de uh, development and then we pay them back a portion of their taxes over time. Um, we have done in some situations bonding where we went out and borrowed money and gave upfront uh, incentives. Um, and we've also do upfront borrowing for public infrastructure improvements. So TID amendments, a TID may be amended for four reasons. Number one, to modify the project plan, to add or subtract property, to extend the maximum lifespan, and to donate tax increments to another TID. TID amendment boundaries may be changed four times. There is no limit on the project plan amendments. One expenditure period amendment if not cash flowing. And then TID, any of the TID amendments and or project plan changes must be approved by the Joint Review Board. So what is the Joint Review Board? They're to establish and main, you're, you're to establish and maintain a Joint Review Board that's made up of one representative of the school district, one re representative of the technical college, uh, one representative from the county, one representative chosen from the city, and then a public member. So this is a listing of the current TIDs in the city of Sheboygan. Um, we'll go into more detail on their current financials, but TID 6 we like to call is the South Pier and the waterfront, basically up to the marina. Uh, TID 10 is Water Street, and that's primarily where the Kingsbury Development Project is under construction today. TID 11 was the area around Washington Square, including Washington Square. That district has been closed as of April 15th of this year. TID 12 is an A Street office building, primarily the Nemshoff, the former Nemshoff building in downtown Sheboygan that now houses Rody Dales. Uh, TID 13 is the landmark condos. It was developed for the landmark square condos and it includes the Founders Club. TID 14 uh, was originally developed for the construction of Festival Foods and was expanded for Meyer <coughs> Foods and the redevelopment that happened around the former Memorial Mall. TID 15, Pick and Save, that's the area where Kmart was demolished and the new Pick and Save at that time was reconstructed. Um, TID 16 is downtown A Street, so it primarily is an area from the bridge up to uh, Niagara Avenue by the Children's Museum. TID 17 encompasses Indiana Avenue, basically from the lake to 14th Street. The River Bend neighborhood is TID 19, and that's the area uh, where Boat Doctors was redeveloped into Lakeshore Technical College. And then TID 20 is the one we uh, created in March, and that's for the redevelopment of the former Vandervaart property. So <clears throat> we're just gonna run through some of the financials of the districts and then be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. But TID 6 was started in 1992. Um, its expenditure period is now closed. It closed as of 12-31-2017. And the end date of that district is January 20th, 2023. Um, it was amended and had a number of changes. So this one exceeded um, the amount of years, uh, primarily based on moving into the recession. Um, so there, it's been open for 33 years and it's to close in 2022. It was created as a blight elimination district. Um, if you look at the current status of the district, the revenues based on 2019 
uh, shows a positive cash balance between revenues and expenses of about 250,000. And then there's about 750,000 in the fund balance. TID 10, the Water Street. Um, this is the area basically from Pennsylvania Avenue out to the Walgreens along the Sheboygan River. Uh, was created in 1997. Um, it closes in 2024. It was created as a blight district with a maximum life of 27 years. Um, the revenues right now are um, positive at about 280,000. There is a deficit in the fund balance um, as of the end of the year, but we're projecting that the new Kingsbury development will help uh, fill that goal with, fill that uh, deficit with the plan to uh, ultimately close it in the positive. TID 12, the A Street office building. So this is the Niagara North A Street. Um, you can see the map on there. It basically goes from 7th Street to um, the middle of North 8th and North 9th from Wisconsin to Ontario. Uh, was created in 2000. It closes in 2027. This district has uh, substantial uh, or has fund balance and has no additional expenses. So right now it's it's a donor district and it's sharing excess revenue with TID 17, which is the Indiana Avenue TID. Um, this is a rehabilitation district open for 27 years. Um, although it shows a negative fund, uh, negative balance as of the end of 2019, um, it does have 340,000 in fund balance. Landmark Square condos. So this is TID 13 that includes the Founders Club and Landmark Square was created in 2005, closes in 2032 for 27 years. Um, sorry, I don't, there's something underneath here, but, oops, sorry. Anyway, um, it's a donor district to TID 17. Uh, it's got $632 as the end of 19 with a fund balance of around 221,000. And it'll see some new increment with the Founders Club development being fully assessed now. So then there's no expenses in that district. <clears throat> Taylor Heights Festival Foods and now Meyer um, was created in 2011, open for 20 years as a mixed use district, closes in 2031, um, has a positive cash balance as of the end of 2019, and a fund balance of around 462,000. Um, does not include the new increment that will be generated from Meyer and the Panera redevelopment as part of that project. TID 15 Pick and Save um, was opened and started in 2011, closes in 2031, open for 20 years as a mixed-use district, um, has a positive cash balance as of the end of 2019, um, and then the fund balance is right around 350000 TID 16, downtown Sheboygan and A Street. So this was created in 2015. Really the uh, reason this was created was to facilitate the development of some market rate apartment housing. Um, it runs through 2035 as a mixed use district. Um, it has a negative cash balance right now of $219,650 as well as about a million dollar fund balance negative. Um, that's to be given. Um, typically, the TIF districts this early on, the, you would exceed those expenditures, and then over time, the pay, payback of the taxes would pay off the debt. And we've done a number of capital improvement <coughs> projects and different things throughout this time. So some, and there's also some additional increment that'll be gathered from High Point Apartments and the Visitor Center. Um, that's part of that is taxable. So there's there's there'll be some additional increment, but it's this is a downtown district that has and a lot of needs, and TIF is one way to fund some of those needs. TID 17, Indiana, this was created in 2018. Um, it closes in 2042 as a rehabilitation district with a maximum life of 27 years. Um, it's right now receiving, it's a recipient TID, receiving funding from TID 12 and TID 13. Um, it has a uh, positive cash balance as of the end of 2019 and a fund balance um, positive as well. But I will note that um, we did take a note out for almost $4 million to repair the infrastructure around the Badger State loss. And, and those uh, debt payments have not been paid back 
or started payment yet. They will start in 2021. So um, even though it shows pretty positive now, it's going to have some um, significant costs going forward. Although there is new increment projected from the Badger State Lofts Project and the South Pier condos that are under construction. TID 18, the South Point Enterprise Campus. This is the new business park on the south side. It was created in 2018. It closes in 2038. It's uh, a 20 year district. It's an industrial district. Um, it has a negative cash balance of about 4.9 million at the end of 19. Um, it's got a little bit of fund balance in 2019, but there is some outstanding notes, NANs that were approved by the council um, for roughly $11 million that need to be paid back. Um, there's also some increment not projected, not included in here that will be coming from the FedEx project to the tune of about 7.7 .7 million. And then the north half of the Warner subdivision um, that hopefully is gonna be breaking ground this year, um, those properties are within this district as well. So it's, it'll see some increment from that. Um, just a little bit on that. So the we're doing an aggressive marketing campaign to a lot of um, economic development areas. And there's, there was interest in the property and then COVID hit. So I'm not sure what that's gonna do for us going forward. Um, but the goal is to try to get a few more developments to at least get this district cash flowing. TID 19, the River Bend neighborhood was opened in 2019. It closes in 2038, it's open for 20 years. Um, it's a mixed use district. It has a positive cash balance. It has a fund deficit as a fund balance deficit as of the end of 2019, although it doesn't include any of the uh, redevelopment that's happened in that area as it relates to the Water's Edge condos, the Boat Doctors and the Richardson Lumber Redevelopment <coughs> Projects. And the last one is the former Vandervar TID 20 was created as of January 1st, 2020. It's open for 27 years as a rehabilitation district through uh, 2047. Um, has no expenditures or um, revenues as it just was started, but um, will be done to facilitate redevelopment of that property. So how many TIDs can the city have? I, that's a question we hear a lot is you seem like you have a lot of TIDs. Um, one thing I would say, the Department of Revenue just keeps adding the numbers progressively. That's why you're seeing 20, some of them are obviously closed, um, but it requires us to not exceed 12% of our total equalized value of taxable property. Um, so when we created TID 20, the city's total equalized value of existing TIDs was around 190 million, um, and the max we could go to is 350 million. So you can see we have a little bit of flexibility in there yet for TIF district creation. Advantages of TIDs, so it can increase the property values spur private investment and development, create a stronger, broader tax base, incremental revenue is reinvested within the district, stimulates investment outside of the district, and then benefits underlying taxing bodies at the end of the TID life. As you saw with the TID 11, will there, where there'll be some payments back to the jurisdictions. The disadvantages is if the increment does not materialize as planned, the city might uh, must find other sources to fund those improvements. Under lab, underlying taxing dis, districts have no benefit until the TID is terminated. TIDs may be used in areas where development would have uh, occurred anyway, um, and then increases the administrative burden on managing local government entity. So that's it in a nutshell. If you've got any questions, I know I went through it fairly quickly, but if you've got any questions, you know, overall, I think the uh, TIDs are doing very well. Um, you know, and hopefully we'll, you know, see continued investment in those particular areas. Thank you very much for that report, Chad. Are there any questions for Chad or Marty? I have one. I have one, Mayor Jim Boren. Please go ahead, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Chad, uh, do you see any other areas in the city that look like they possibly could be TID territory within the next five years? Um, the one that comes to mind right now is if we ever do any redevelopment of the armory property. So I would say um, that's a potential. Um, if Pentair develops, that's already in TID 17. Um, so I, 
besides Pentair, I can't say that there's any other ones that come to mind. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much, Chad. Next item on the agenda is public forum, city clerk. There is no one this evening. And then we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Uh, first of all, I have some sad news today. When I read the paper, I find out that former alderman person, Dennis Bauman, had passed away. We prepared a resolution to recognize his service to the city as an alder person, and I'd just like to read that. A resolution commemorating the distinguished service of Dennis Bauman to the city of Sheboygan. Whereas God and his divine wisdom has called from this life our valued friend and fellow former alder person, Dennis Bauman. Whereas Dennis A. Bauman served the residents of the city of Sheboygan as an alder person in the third district for many years, stretching from 1991 to 2005. And whereas during his tenure as an alder person, Mr. Bauman served as a valuable member of numerous council committees, including the Public Works Committee, uh, also serving as chair, uh, the Judiciary and Legislative Committee, uh, serving as vice chair and chair, and the Public Protection and Safety Committee serving as chair. Whereas Mr. Bauman served his constituents and the city of Sheboygan faithfully and honorably, being a man of outstanding ability and integrity. Whereas Mr. Bauman was a valuable member of the city council and the committees upon which he served, always giving conscientious consideration to all matters which came before him in legislating with an open mind, putting honesty and charity before all else. He will always be a good example to all. Therefore, it be resolved that the city of Sheboygan Common Council go on record in their deep sorrow and offer to his family their deepest sympathy. And whereas Dennis Bauman passed away on Friday, June 12th, and now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council hereby commemorates the distinguished service rendered by Mr. Bauman, to the city of Sheboygan throughout his many years of service, expresses his sorrow in his passing and offers his wife Gloria and his entire family their deepest sympathy. Now this uh, happened just today, so it wasn't on the agenda for tonight. This will be uh, processed next uh, week and uh, this will be on our uh, next council meeting agenda to uh, pass this. But I'd just like to ask everybody to stand for a moment of silence in honor of Dennis Bauman. Thank you. Uh, tonight, uh, I have the privilege of uh, a proc uh, sending out a proclamation to name the Poet Laureate for the City of Sheboygan. You may remember that at a recent meeting, the council approved this new position. We had four individuals who applied for it, and uh, we announced our decision tonight. Um, whereas poetry tells the history of human feeling and can sustain emotional memory of a community, and whereas poetry allows us to perceive our experience with greater richness and complexity, and whereas poetry can carry us to the frontiers of linguistic imagination so that we can articulate our vision of the future, and whereas knowledge of poetic traditions allows us to know more about our own culture and can serve as a passport to the cultures of others, and whereas the mayor's office and the common council with the support from the Mead Library have established and supported the honorary poet laureate position with a term of service from June 15th of 2020 through April 1st of 2023. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, mayor of the city of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim that Lisa Vijos is the poet laureate for Sheboygan. And uh, I just wanna say that uh, 
Lisa has been a resident of the city for 18 years. She is currently on the staff of the John Michael Kohler Art Center as a grants manager. Lisa's poems have appeared in many poetry journals, both print and online. She has uh, four uh, chapbooks of her poems published and has two poetry anthologies that she's edited. Since 2008, Lisa has received numerous awards for her poems from Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets and the Wisconsin Academy of Sciences and Arts and Letters. Lisa's focus has always been to encourage personal transformation through poetry and the visual arts, and she is well-versed at bringing people of all ages together to develop creative, vibrant communities. We are so pleased that she will serve as the first Poet Laureate for the city of Sheboygan. Lisa, please come forward, and I think she has a poem to present to us this evening. Let's see, can you hear me through my mask? Well, this is a great honor. I'm very, very excited about this concept of, and reality of having a Poet Laureate for the city. Um, for the last 10 years, I've been working with many people in the community to do events. In fact, maybe five or six years ago, Mayor Vandersteen was a participant in an event we were doing, we've done, for many years called um, poetic pairings. And uh, we pair a community member with a poet and the poetry creates a conversation. And so I'm looking forward to many more conversations. And tonight, uh, Mayor Vandersteen asked me to read a poem. So this is one I wrote recently and um, I think it'll resonate with some things that we're all experiencing right now. It's called In the Pick and Save Parking Lot. Looking over the top of my mask, my glasses already steamed, I meet your eyes, stranger, and we smile. We cannot see these smiles, but we know we are smiling. The twinkle in the eye tells all. We raise our hands in silent salute. Nothing could have prepared us for this moment, or maybe everything did. If only our hands could meet, Right here, we'd become a prayer. We know we are members of the same tribe, fighting an insidious evil that flourishes on the breath, on the wind, and has run unchecked in all the lies of now and in all the lies past. Let it be unchecked no more. In the journey towards justice, there is just us, essential prophets, Seeing Beyond the Mask. Thank you. Smile. <laughs> you can tell we're smiling. Welcome. <laughs> Next, I'd like to ask John Samuels to come forward. John Samuels was born and raised in New York State and enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps in 1981. In the fall of 81, John was awarded an ROTC scholarship to Marquette University and graduated with a bachelor's degree in May of 1985, at which time he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. He was promoted to captain and served until 1990. In February of 1990, he was hired by the San Diego Police Department and worked there until he was hired by the Sheboygan Police Department on January 4th of 1994. While at the Sheboygan Police Department, John has taken the additional duties of a field training officer where he helped train and develop our new hires. He served as an evidence technician where he was responsible for processing crimes and collecting evidence on major cases, and he also served as a firearms and rifle instructor. During this time with the Sheboygan Police Department, John also continued his service to our country as a member of the Wisconsin National Guard. During his service with the Guard, he completed tours both in Iraq and Afghanistan. Chief Demogalsti has said that he is grateful for the 26 and a half years of dependable professional service that John has given to the city police department. 
on John's last day of work with the city will be on June 29th of 2020. Upon his retirement from the city on June 30th, John will transition to a two-year active duty assignment with the United States Army, where he will serve as the battalion commander of the Soldier Recovery Unit at Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas. John, we thank you for the service you gave to the city and ask you to be blessed with the wisdom, patience, and energy necessary to lead the recovery of our soldiers. Thank you so much for your service. John, tonight I'd like to present a special certificate of appreciation from the city of Sheboygan to John Samuels for 26 years of dedicated service from January 4th of 1994 through June 29th of 2020. John, thank you so much and have yourself I'd like to ask Pastor Michael Thomas to step forward. Tonight we have a proclamation on Juneteenth Day. Uh, whereas the President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st of 1863, declaring that the slaves in Confederate territory are free and paving the way for the passing of the 13th Amendment, which formally abolished slavery in the United States of America. And whereas Word about the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was delayed some two and a half years to June 19th of 1865 in reaching authorities in the African Americans in the South and Southwestern United States. And whereas June 19th has a special meeting to African Americans and is called Juneteenth, combining the words of June and 19th, and is the oldest known public celebration at the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas Juneteenth commemorates African American freedoms, celebrates the success gained through education and greater opportunity, and whereas on a larger scale, celebration of Juneteenth reminds each of us that the precious promises of freedom, equality, and opportunity, which are at the core of the American dream, I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do proclaim June 19th of 2020 as Juneteenth Day in Sheboygan and urge all residents to become more aware of the significance of this celebration in African American history and the heritage of our nation and city. And we must continue to eliminate racial disparities and support efforts to increase diversity and promote racial equality in Sheboygan. Uh, Michael, I'm pleased to present this to you. And do uh, you have anything you'd like to say? Sure. Okay. All right, please go ahead. I'll take a picture. It is an honor to be able to receive this. I thank you all for um, bestowing this upon uh, myself and uh, members of the African American community. And I believe that this isn't just uh, a step forward, but a leap forward in uh, our continued unity as a people. And I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And I understand there's going to be some festivities all day on Juneteenth Day at Fountain Park. We have one more retirement certificate, Daryl Hoffland. Daryl has served as the Sheboygan administrator for the last four years and two months. During this time, he's made the city of Sheboygan a more professional organization. The city now has, uh, the city now is uh, much more, has documents that much more, in, uh, more professional. The city uh, now has a much more, uh, a uh, budget document that is more informative for our residents and uh, has received recognition from the GFOA uh, who awarded Sheboygan the Distinguished Budget Present Presentation Award each year. 
Daryl is overseeing the renovation of City Hall, the development of a new business park, the South Point Enterprise Campus, the development of a, of a concept for the Innovation District, street resurfacing, and development of a workforce housing. He's focused on the development also of implementation of the city strategic plan. Daryl has worked to develop more communication with residents and instituted annual surveys to learn the issues that are most important and get feedback on the uh, performance of city departments. He also began to track the performance of each department so that the leadership in the community can see that they are being well served by city government. Unfortunately, he has decided to retire from his role as City of Sheboygan Administrator. I want to thank Daryl for moving the city forward on many fronts and wish him a great retirement. This is his last city council meeting prior to his final day with the city on July 3rd. Daryl, please come forward. We have a certificate of appreciation to present to Daryl uh, for his four years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan from April 25th of 16 through July 3rd of 2020. And uh, I understand that Daryl uh, likes to do a little sailing. So we've given him a little uh, artwork that has some sailboats on the, uh, the harbor with the uh, city and the lighthouse in the background as a commemoration of his time here at the city of Sheboygan, which was so important to us. Daryl, thank you. Uh, thanks, Mike, and uh, thank you, council members. Uh, Sheboygan is a great community, as we all know. The past four years have gone very fast. Difficult issues that were debated for years, but were finally decided included uh, the $10.5 million renovation of this building. Uh, we also discussed the recommitment of the city's five fire station model and appropriate staffing. And of course, in the last month, demolition of the armory uh, was finally authorized. Uh, during this past four years, I am especially proud of the redevelopment of many long blighted properties in the community, especially in the downtown development of the business park, as you mentioned, Mike, and transitioning the city government toward a high-performing organization model. Uh, in response to market demand and the challenges of local businesses to recruit workforce, uh, the city's during the past four years has uh, overseen the development or planned uh, construction of over a thousand owner-occupied or rental units on 12 different sites. Most of these housing units again are on redevelopment sites that are in or adjacent to downtown. Also, for the first time in a couple decades, a new subdivision uh, will begin construction this year on the city's south side containing over 130 single and duplex units. The management team and common council works very well together in getting things done for the betterment of the community and as cost effective as possible. I continue to be very impressed with the talent and creativity of city staff. It's been rewarding to see the positive response by city residents to this transformation of the, of the city over the past four years. In response to a 2020 community survey question about the overall direction of the city, 78% of the residents selected improving or steady. This is a 36% increase over the past five years. After 35 years of municipal leadership in Appleton, Little Shoot, Grafton, and Sheboygan, I look forward to the next chapter of my career. Thank you so much. Carol, I thought I uh, surprised you, buddy. You have your own notes. You were very <laughs> Next, I want to go on to a little update on uh, COVID-19. First of all, let's review the numbers for today. Uh, last week, uh, we had 119 positive cases. This week, we're up 50 to 169 positive cases. Last week, we had 23 cases that were active. This week, we're up 26 to 49 cases. Uh, last week, we had 93 cases that had recovered. Now we're up to 116 cases. That's an increase of 23 cases that have recovered. Uh, last week we had no uh, 
COVID cases in our hospitals, and this week we have one. Uh, unfortunately, last week we had one more death, so we were up one death uh, from three to four. Uh, the tests have increased quite a bit. Um, this uh, week we have uh, 6,177 cases that were tested, and that's 1,289 more than last week. If you look at our percentage of cases per the test, uh, about a month ago we were at about 3.4%. Last week we were at 2.4%, and this week we're at 1.8%. So it's going in the right direction, even though we've had some higher numbers this last week. Uh, this last week, there was an outbreak of 20 positive cases associated with a church in Sheboygan County. And the other cases were associated with contact with known cases and just community spread. The Sheboygan uh, County Health officials released the uh, Sheboygan County Safe Restart recommendations to, to plan to open up with strong controls for businesses and residents. We are now in phase two of the plan, and it says that if businesses open, they need to follow the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation's best practices and sanctions uh, specific to their sector. Uh, in phase two, which we are now, businesses that choose to open must do so using the guidelines from the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and any sector-specific recommendations that apply to their work that's being done. Limit capacity to non-essential business bars and restaurants. It's up to 50% of capacity now. And events held outdoors should allow for people to maintain six feet of physical distance from others. Encourage curbside pickup to reduce in-store traffic and long lines. And always wear a cloth mask for staff. City Hall is now open to the public. The main library is open to the public with limited hours, Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturday, 10 to 2. But the third floor meeting rooms and meeting rooms are still closed. Municipal Court is conducting virtual hearings. And our city parks have remained open. All city playgrounds will be open tomorrow. Residents can use at their own risk. The city is not able to sanitize the play equipment. We encourage residents to bring their own hand sanitizer to sanitize the hands of children after using that play equipment. City parks and building shelters, or city rather, uh, park buildings and shelters will remain closed. The following restaurant rooms are available for public use as the phased reopening of, uh, of city facilities continues. Deland Community Center, the outside restrooms only, Deland Beach House, Richardson Shelter, Rotary Riverview Park, Evergreen Park, areas one and four, South Pier Turnaround, South Pier Fish Cleaning Station, Deland Park Fish Cleaning Station, Walrath Park, Kiwanis Field House, and King Park. The facilities that are available for the public to use as part of the phase reopening are the Deland Park Tennis Courts, Moose Park Tennis Courts, Veterans Park Tennis Courts, the Volrath Park Tennis Courts and Pickleball Courts will be open this Wednesday. The Kiwanis Skate Park, Kiwanis Kayak Launch, although it's a little wet going in, all basketball courts, all trails and all beaches. The Senior Activity Center will remain closed. And starting uh, today, Shoreline Metro resumed weekday service uh, late in the day from 5.45 to 8.45 p.m and will maintain capacity at 15 riders on each bus. And they currently have one hour service and complimentary fares uh, for riders. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. That'll include items uh, 2.2 through 2.18. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file all our O's, receive all our C's, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those Second. items. Those items are on the floor for discussion. Seeing no discussion, I'd ask the clerk to call the, call the roll for passage.
Alderperson Donahue. Oh, there you are. Ten eyes. Motion passes. <laughs> Under reports of officers, item 3.1 is RO number 22 of 2021 by the Transit Commission to whom was referred resolution number 33 of 2021 by Alderpersons Wolf and Donahue, authorizing the appropriate city officials to sign the final offer of the city of Sheboygan with uh, the attached tentative agreement, which document has been approved by the Amalgamated Transit Union Local 998 and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Good. Is there any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 3.2 and 3.3 will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.6 will be referred to various committees. Under Section 5, Reports of Committees, 5.1 is RC number 54 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 30 of 2021 by Alderpersons Wolf and Donahue, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the First Amendment uh, of the development agreement between the Oscar Apartments LLC and the City of Sheboygan with regard to the development adjacent to South 15th Street and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. She's Mary Lynn, you're not coming through. I moved. I heard you say I moved. Second foreign. And we have a second. That item is on the floor for discussion. Move to approve. Second foreign. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under um, other matters authorized by law, I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2020, April 14, 2021, June 30, 2021, and June 30, 2022. That will be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Next, we'll move on to adjournment. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Motion passes. Thank you for your time tonight.